Professor Clements with you again as we uh, work through our last section in Chapter 25 of OpenStax College Physics, um, working in Section 7 here, dealing with mirrors, forming images with mirrors. Uh, if you're near the uh, lakefront in Chicago, Millennium Park, uh, you might see the Chicago Bean. It's a highly reflective surface, curved, so convex out in this portion, concave underneath, and has some uh, interesting visual effects. So hope you're able to see that sometime. We're going to discuss flat mirrors, uh, concave and convex mirrors, how we form uh, an image with those uh, materials. So the flat mirror, we have light being reflected off of this bottle in many different directions. The slide shows two rays from the top, two rays from the bottom. And as they strike the mirror, they obey the law of reflection. The angle in equals the angle off of the mirror. And the rays continue to diverge then after the mirror as uh, the uh, mirror is not curved, so there's no change in the rate of divergence of the, of the two rays. The eye extends the rays back to a meeting point back behind the mirror, and we see an upright virtual image the same size as our object. When the mirror surface is curved, now we can adjust the convergence or divergence of the rays. So here we have a section of a spherical mirror, and there is spherical aberration. If our rays are too far away from the principal axis, the optical axis of the mirror, uh, we get the energy to a different focus. We're going to ignore that effect for our drawings and calculations, and we'll just uh, use this working principle. That if the rays come in parallel to the mirror, they reflect through the focal point. And in a situation with a convex uh, mirror, the previous one was concave, convex mirror, then the rays diverge. And I hope you're seeing some similarities between the converging and diverging lenses. Uh, we'll just have to modify our rules for ray tracing a little bit and uh, we'll be good to go. So the rays come in parallel, they reflect off of the mirror as if they came from the focal point. So that's a convex mirror. And in, again in our calculations, the uh, diverging situation here, we're going to use a negative focal length number. Um, so a ray tracing example, here we have an object, a key, and it's outside the focal length of the mirror. We're going to use rule number one and rule number three tracing through here. If we have a ray that comes in parallel to the optic axis, it reflects through the focal point, so extend ray number one. Rule number three, if we go through the focal point first, we reflect off of the mirror in a ray that's parallel to the optic axis, and those where those two cross. Um, this is not a real great example, I don't think, for ray number two. You'd have to get your protractor out here and draw these uh, angles equal, reflecting at the uh, center portion of the mirror. Um, so if we want to get a better convergence of the energy, instead of using a spherical mirror, a parabolic mirror is used. So high quality telescopes by professional astronomers would actually have a parabolic mirror in them, not a spherical mirror. They would have spherical aberration. So just the parabola has a uh, property that uh, energy coming in is reflected to one focus point. Okay, another ray tracing example here. We have a situation of a concave mirror with the object in between the focal point and the mirror. And just as happened for the converging lens situation, we can get a virtual image, a magnified image in this uh, situation. So we take ray number one in parallel to the optic axis. It reflects back through the focus. If we take ray number three as if it came from the focus up to the mirror, it reflects back parallel to the optic axis. If we extend ray three and ray one, we form, we find the location of the virtual image. It's upright and it's larger, and you could apply makeup with it. Um, here's another drawing for the convex situation. Object out in front. Rule number one, we take a ray that's parallel to the optic axis. It reflects off the mirror as if it came from the focal point. And then a ray directly to the center of the mirror goes straight. 
So that's how you can analyze the situation for the convex mirror, where the extension of these two rays out in space, out in the air, uh, the extension backwards, where they cross, we form the image, IMG here. For the spherical mirrors, both the uh, concave and the convex, the radius of the mirror needs to do, be divided by two to find the focal length. So if this is 10 centimeters, our focal length would be 5 and actually minus 5 because it's a convex mirror. If the radius of curvature of a concave mirror, a positive mirror, was 10 centimeters, its focal length would be plus 5. But with the convex mirror, our objects uh, form a virtual image that's back behind the mirror. Here's an example, security mirrors or convex mirrors that bows out towards you at the middle and you get to see a wide field of view from this type of mirror and also the objects in the mirror are really closer than what they appear because the image is made smaller the magnification is less than one we have a situation where your brain can be a little bit fooled into thinking that uh, whatever you're seeing is further away actually it is uh, closer so that's a quick tour of uh, of mirrors and just hang on a little bit if you're in my class as I'd like you to uh, to think about mirrors just a little bit uh, we know that the focal length of the mirror is half of the radius you'll keep that in mind for a convex mirror the uh, portion of the mirror that is uh, closer to the object will be bent out towards the object and the edges of the mirror curves away from the object. That's a convex mirror. A concave mirror, it's as if you're looking into a cave. Um, so the edges of the mirror would be closer to the object than the center of the mirror. Um, and if we would put two flat mirrors at right angles to each other, we would actually able, be able to see three images in that uh, system. You should try the ray tracing for this and look at another of my YouTube videos would be an example there of locating uh, images when we have two mirrors at right angles to each other. Um, I hope you're, you're reading, you're practicing, and you're asking uh, your instructor some questions on this. Um, the geometrical optics, again, when the uh, optical elements are much bigger than the wavelength, we can use geometry and we don't have to worry so much about the wave nature. We use rays to indicate the direction of the energy flow. In a future chapter we'll have to be a little bit more careful about our analysis on the motion of the energy through small openings and around small objects. So similarities between uh, lenses and mirrors, um, practice and ask questions.